Good morning, everybody. Welcome to, it is today, Wednesday, the 28th of February. Normally it would be the last day of February, but it actually is the next to last day of this year. We get to add another day. <clears throat> How about that? Um, 2024 is different. It's, it's different than all of the, um, the last four years. This is, this year is really different. There's a, a sense in my heart of a, of a, a breakthrough of what God is wanting to do, um, in us personally, as well as in our hearts and in our lives. So, um, I want to thank the Lord for that. It's like, it's like been, um, a year of refreshment and restoration. Many of us have been restored and have been um, strengthened. Many have been empowered, and uh, and I and I understand that it's a. Um, <clears throat> I understand that it's a a, 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 a process, but. I also know this, that the power of God is manifesting itself in your life and my life. And, and I want to thank the Lord for that. Uh, the, the 2020s so far have been hard, uh, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And, uh, the best part is that God is doing great things. And, um, and I have my opinions as to the reason why, but those are my opinions and could be the opinions of others. But anyway. So I want to welcome you to today's broadcast and, and uh, understanding that God is on the throne. He's powerful and he's encouraging. If you haven't heard it, go to the 90 seconds of hope today. We have an anchor in him. Amen. Um, praise God. We are in John 15 and we're going to start with verse 18. But um, I want to go ahead and just tell you, go ahead and subscribe to Tom and Sarah on uh, my YouTube channel, on my uh, podcast. You can get that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all these others. And um, uh, wherever podcasts are, just type in Tom in Sarah, Abounding Hope or Encountering God, and you will find me. Um, <clears throat> comment, like, share uh, all those videos. Uh, also, um, on this channel, if, uh, uh, you know, on Facebook, go ahead and like, comment, share the video. Let your friends hear hope in what we're doing. We are um, just about two-thirds of the way through the book of John. And, uh, and it took us almost two months to get this far. Imagine I was hoping to do a chapter a day, but I <laughs> it's not working out that way. Praise God. Anyway, let's go to John 15, uh, verse 18. Just remember, now remember, this is Jesus' last night on earth with his disciples, and he's giving them his parting words. The most important words a person can give is parting words. When they're leaving, you know, uh, when they are not leaving, but when they are um, moving on or passing away. I remember, you know, my dad had some really pretty good uh, words of advice for me when he was passing away. And, uh, and that's how it is. Probably the most important things people say in their life. What they want you to remember is when you are, is, is, is usually in the last moments of their life. Okay. So he says, just remember when the unbelieving world hates you, they first hated me. Have you ever felt sometimes when uh, things are, oh, how do you say it? Uh, have you ever wondered why people just don't like you for some reason? You, you, you walk into a place and people scowl at you. They, you never met them. You never gave them a reason to hate you. Um, a lot of times it's the Holy Spirit in you that irritates that spirit in them, especially if they're unbelievers. There are things that happen in your life and in my life that, uh, that, that brings Holy Spirit into us. And then what happens is people 
get irritated at you. They hate you for no reason at all. I, there, there's some things on TikTok and YouTube and all that, um, uh, the, the, you know, little skits where somebody says, I love you. And, and, uh, and people will ask, well, why? And he said, well, if, uh, well, people can hate for no reason. I can love for no reason. But believers love because of God, because God is touching them, because God is, is working in them and on them. It's a good word right there. Um, so <clears throat> remember, when the unbelieving world hates you, they first hated me. In this world, you're going to have issues. You're going to have people not like you. It's okay. They first hated Jesus. And if you are his followers, because you are his followers, they're going to hate you. Okay? If you were to give your allegiance to this world, they would love you. And they would welcome you as one of their own. But because you have, because you won't align yourself with the values of this world, they will hate you. In our society today, anybody that doesn't agree with, um, uh, things that are being said, um, I want to be careful here, but, uh, if you don't agree totally with, um, with what is being said, what happens is people hate you. The media will say things. The um, the politicians will say things. They will put laws into effect. And because you don't align yourself with that, they will hate you. Because you won't give your allegiance to them, they will hate you. So understand that that's going to happen. I have chosen you and taken you out of the world to be mine. And he's not talking about the physical world. He's talking about uh, the systems of the world. I have chosen you and taken you out of the, the systems of this world, the systems, uh, the uh, this worldly things. Uh, and Paul says, we are strangers and aliens. We are citizenship, citizens of heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. Now, the Bible also says that uh, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are seated with, well, where is Jesus? He's at the right hand of the Father. So we are seated with him already in heavenly places, as a believer, we, as believers, we are eternal beings. We are not, we are eternal beings. We are not temporal beings. We are not um, just taking up air and taking up space. You understand? So remember what I have taught you, that a servant isn't superior to his master. A servant is not superior to his redeemer. If somebody redeems you, you are not better than they are. You are not superior. Jesus redeemed us. We are not superior to him. Sadly, if you were to take uh, the Holy Spirit out of church, out of like 80% of the churches, and, you know, they, <laughs> I heard a guy say 80% <laughs> of all statistics are made up and 90% of those 80% are made up on the spot. But somewhere around 75 to 80 percent of American churches, if you were to take the Holy Spirit out, they would still function. The churches of the 80s and 90s and the early 2000s were working under a business model. They had a board, 
that ran the church and the pastor was a puppet. And, and, and I've had this situation in my life. Uh, when I pastored and I, and I had a, um, I pastored one church, a, a church, and um, they had a very rich, I pastored a number of churches, uh, kind of helping them out and getting them going. Uh, but the ones that I didn't start, the, the, uh, some of them had very rich people who owned the church property. They owned the building and they wanted to have their beliefs preached. And if they didn't like you or they didn't agree with you, you were gone. I remember, uh, Chuck Smith back in, um, uh, Calvary Chapel days, um, back in, um, California, lower Ca south, southern California. Um, Chuck Smith was, was pastoring and, um, and hippies started coming to the church and they didn't wear shoes and the church people were getting upset because they were stepping on the carpet. They were dirtying the carpet. So Chuck, Pastor Chuck would go outside before the service and as they were coming and wash their feet. Um, another pastor I know, um, took, um, uh, took the carpet out. Okay. I don't know. I don't know him personally, but I know of him, um, that he took the, he took the carpeting out. I know another guy who was pastoring a church in Chicago. I know of another guy. And, uh, he, um, he had a dream one night of prostitutes, drug dealers, murderers, gang members coming into his church. And they were, um, they were doing these things in the, in the, in the pews. This was in his dream. And he said, Lord, I don't want these. He said, well, no, you've been asking for these, these people to come to the church. I'm bringing them to you. Love them. The church belongs to Jesus. The church is run by the Holy Spirit, not by man. I left those churches because I'm not going, you know, I, and I started a church, I started churches uh, from that, but I'm not going to secondarily go after um, uh, please man because that's the thing to do to keep a salary. I'm not going to do it. I walked into the church and I said, we're going to go after signs and wonders and miracles. And the church said, no, we're not. The leaders of the board said, no, we're not. And I said, yes, we are. No, we're not. Yes, we are. Well, here's the keys. I'm not going to fight you for a building. Jesus said, go into the world and make disciples. He didn't say go into the world and, um, and, 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 and build a building. Now, now, don't get me wrong. Buildings are good, but you got to have a building to meet in sometimes. But, you know, and then we meet in my living room and have tremendous times. I'm going after signs and wonders and miracles. I'm going after Jesus. I'm going after the Holy Spirit. He said, these signs will follow those who have their total trust in him. Since they persecuted Jesus, they will also persecute you. And if they obey my teachings, they will also obey yours. That's verse 20. They will treat you this way because you are mine and they don't know the one who sent me. They're going to treat you like that because they don't know who you are. <clears throat> I remember Yuri Gagarin back in 61, he went and he uh, went up into space and uh, and came back down. And, uh, and you know, Russia at that time was a very atheistic nation. The Soviet Union was very atheistic. And he got up there and he said, I want to, um, <clears throat> when I got up into space, I did not see God. And that was supposed to prove that God didn't exist. So a man went, a uh, man was talking, I don't know if it was to him or to somebody else who brought that up. And he said, well, 
to talk about God on that level, like you're talking about the man on the second floor and you're living on the first floor and never seen this guy on the second floor. He said very much what you're saying is like Hamlet saying, I don't know Shakespeare. So therefore Shakespeare doesn't exist. I didn't see Shakespeare. Well, unless Shakespeare wrote himself in the Hamlet, Hamlet would not know Shakespeare. So unless you transport yourself into the kingdom of God and give your life to him, you don't know him and you can't know him. And that's the reason why people, that's one of the things that they will do uh, in, in, in America today. Uh, they are trying to make us a socialistic, uh, communistic state, very super left. But because they don't obey the Lord, they're going to persecute you because you do. Rome did that back in the first century. If they didn't believe you, if, they, if because they didn't believe in God the way that true believers did, they persecuted them. They hung them. They, they, they crucified them. Nero fiddled while Rome burned because they were burning Christians on crosses on the roads. They will treat you this way because you are mine. Because of the name of Jesus, because of the character of God, they will persecute you. Because it irritates, it frustrates, it destroys the spirit that's in them. It convicts them. And they don't know the one who sent him. They don't know the father. Verse 22, and if I had come and spoken these things to the unbelieving world, they would not feel the guilt of their sin, but now their sin is left exposed or uncovered. That's how it's translated in the Aramaic. Now we're going to pause here for a second. I'm just going to let you know if you want to support this ministry, like, share, comment. Go to my YouTube channel, like, share, comment. All right, go to my go to my podcast, like, share, and comment. Subscribe to them. And God will touch, you know, I believe God will touch you. And it will also help this ministry. I have two books for sale. One of them is called SOS, A 50-Day Journey into the Heart of God. And From Breakdown to Breakthrough, My Journey to Soul Health. You can get both of those books from Amazon, Walmart.com, BarnesandNoble.com, all of them. Any place that sells books, you can get those books. If you would like a PDF, I'm going to see if I have them. Uh, but if you would like a PDF, email me at Tom and Sarah Ministries at gmail.com for any type of donation. We'll email those out to you. If you want to support the ministry, Tom and Sarah Ministries at gmail.com or I'm going to put my cash app Venmo, PayPal um, uh, signs on the videos and you can get them from there, okay? Any donation helps. I'm going to school next year. Um, I'm going to need, you know, close to $7,000, which includes the ministry trip. If you want to help out with that, thank you very much. And, and I thank you in advance. Pray, ask God how much you're to give. All right, back to John 15. Verse 23, if anyone hates me, they hated my father also. If I did not perform, if I had not performed miracles in their presence, like no one else has done, they would not feel the guilt of their sins. That is why they hate you. That is why they hated Jesus, because they felt this guilt. Jesus walked around in purity, and we are to walk around in purity as well. What good is it if you're persecuted because of something you did wrong? If you're thrown in jail because you broke the law? You murder somebody, you go to jail. That's not being persecuted for the sake of the gospel. Blessed are you when people revile you and say all manners of evil uh, falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. 
But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. Verse 25, and all this happened to fulfill what is written in their scriptures. They hated me for no reason. Psalm 35, 19. Oh, let's go there real quick. Psalm 35, 19. Psalm 35, 19 says, Do not let those who are wrongfully my enemies rejoice over me, nor let those who hate me for no reason wink maliciously. Don't let them do this thing. In the Passion Translation, uh, let's get there. Mm -hmm. In the Passion, verse 19 says, Don't let those fight for me for no reason. Be victorious. Don't let them succeed. Who's, well, <clears throat> don't let them succeed these heartless haters who come against me with their gro gro gloating sneers. Don't let them have vic victory. Okay? It happens. They hate him for no reason. In the Psalms, Psalm 69, 4. basically says the same thing. Can't get it on my tablet, but it's okay. Psalm 69.4 basically says the same thing. Don't let them rejoice. Now, verse 26 of chapter 15, and I will send you the divine encourager. Who's he talking about? The Holy Ghost. I will send you the divine encourager from the very presence of my father. Okay. He says that uh, he, he's going to send you the redeemer from the curse. From the very presence of my father. He will come to you the spirit of truth emanating from the father and he will speak. He will provide evidence to you about Jesus, about me what he said for you have walked with uh, he says uh, yeah and you will tell everyone the truth about me for you have walked with me from the start you walk with him from the start you will tell the truth and they will listen to you and you will tell everyone about that doesn't say that they will believe you just says you'll tell everyone I mean, I, I know we have some James Bond Christians, people who who are um, hiding. Oh, I, I believe God, but you know, it's really hard. We, we obey the Lord, but we have to go after him and we have to tell people about him. We have been called to be evangelists. We do it out of love, not out of obligation. He will send us the Holy Spirit, the divine encourager from the very presence of my Father. He will come. He will come from the Father and he will tell you all about Jesus. You notice how you get sometimes when, when, when Christians, true believers are in prayer, they will get, um, like Jesus will reveal something about himself. I mean, that, that's happened to me numerous times. When I just kind of started to feel the presence of God, um, and, and, and Jesus would reveal something about himself to me. And the Lord, that's the Holy Spirit revealing it. We have to trust Holy Spirit. 
read the word, pray, trust God. That's how it works. All right, well, that's it for today. I want to thank you for joining me. Remember, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel, to uh, my podcast. Um, this is the way we get the word out. Praise God. God is so good. Well, anyway, thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.